a very good morning to you. Welcome to day two here at Goodwood Revival 2023. It's going to be an absolute scorcher and we are stepping back in time to the golden era of motor racing. We have a fantastic day packed full of races. <laughs> How much fun it was going through all the weather throughout the year of course that you would be riding and delivering telegrams and that was how people had to communicate big messages nowadays all we do is grab our phones and send a message in those days it was different and the flag falls at goodwood we go racing on the saturday one car left on the line there hands up to the rest of the drivers the majority of the field all but one made it off the line the pack, but the brm got into the leaders notice in front but now ben fiddler sorry alongside is the silver car making the moves the ERA pushing on very, very hard indeed. And the light green one now, trying to look for the move. Watch and enjoy. You can see precisely what these two drivers are doing. But with that extra momentum out of the second part of Magwick propelled uh, Mark Gillies up past uh, David Morris into second place. But Michael Gans in the mix as well. Still seeing what's going to happen to Ben Fiddler. He started on position. He's the back car in that position, in that group as Gillies goes in front again. A carbon copy. So taking the lead at this point as we make our way through the right-hander. The BRM will know that it's got superior power. The traffic could be an issue for this quartet as they scorch clear. I don't quite sense that David Morris in the second play, the second of the ERAs, the silver cars, quite got the pace. He hasn't made an error, though. That's why he's still in the mix. Have we had any further change? No, we haven't. Second, third, and fourth, still BRM, ERA, Alsa. But I think if uh, the Alsa can get through, and now David Morris is going through, and I fear there's been a problem there for... Uh, Rob Hall, he's nursing something of that BRM. That's a, a statement that could have been said in period as well. And for people seeing these cars racing for the first time, to see how much sideways is involved. Sideways in many racing cars means you've just wrecked your lap, but here it just has doubled the fun for people watching. But look how much closer Ian Baxter has gone. Suddenly, if there's a missed gear change, we'll have a change for the lead. And Ian Baxter fancies it. Over the line, side by side, the two cars. It's going to be incredibly close. It's Baxter on the line by one tenth of a second. What just happened? Races like this in the modern era. Oh, go, no, no, go, no. Dean Harrison stood there. I don't know what he was looking at. <laughs> this is the star of Massively. It's a great start for Steve Brogan. He's got away very, very well. Steve Brogan has put a little a little bit of a stretch on here. He was good out the back part of the track, and he's managed to hold that gap. But luckily for him in the last chicane there, whoever's on the BMW has held up held up a few people as well. So if, um, if he can keep away this gap and not give the other guys a bit of a slip, Street. This is good for Steve. So this is still your lead group. Look at it, four abreast. Yes, um, because the bikes are quite slow compared to modern bikes. Oh no, the MV is the MV stopped. Oh, this is not good. I oh, really the lamp pulling over. Oh no! Oh, what a shame. They're all coming into the pits now. But this is going to be interesting at the same time. So, like I said, you want to be fit to see your team as, as Brogy tries to pass in pit lane. This is funny that the lead group have all come in. It's obviously we're coming up towards the time where you have to have made your stop, and they've all decided to come in at exactly that same time. Oh, Russell's got a really good run out of there, though, so uh, see if English now can get in the, in the slipstream. Well, it's oh, the other way around, you see. English oh, yes, had already sorry, got yeah. past. English had already taken the lead, and now, but I think you're right. Comes. I think you're right. I think my, Michael Russell might be timing this perfectly. He let it through on the last lap, and now as they go down the Lambert straight, he uses that slipstream speed to go ahead into the final corner, into Woodcut. He's oh, got no, some traffic up ahead as well, so he's got to be a bit cautious as they come up towards the chicane. Oh, There's an attempt by Glenn English, he's done it! He's yeah. gone down the inside! Glenn English, what a perfect performance from Glenn English, sharing with Steve Plater. They take the victory in the Barry Sheen Memorial. Second place for Michael Rutter and Michael Russell. I'm in a very shiny Spitfire, and I'm here with Mark Hillier, Head of Operations for Spitfire.com. Tell me about this wonderful, wonderful aeroplane. This, this beautiful aeroplane was manufactured in 1943 at Castle Bromwich, and um, she carried out over 50 combat sorties in the Second World War. But she's absolutely beautiful in this polished aluminium finish. She did the round-the-world trip with Matt Jones, Steve Brooks, and uh, Ian Smith, and uh, it holds a world record for its round-the-world trip. But she looks absolutely gorgeous in the sunlight today. But a very historic airframe, you know, and flew locally as well at RAF Ford just down the road. Um, so, yeah, plenty of history to this aircraft. And still flies now? Still flies now yeah she's our baby when she comes back to good we like to look after and polish her you can see it takes quite a while to polish it up um, but yeah we're privileged really to be able to look after such a historic aircraft
this is the most exciting grid walk for all of you guys um, and one of the most panic inducing for me. Uh, I'm uh, surrounded by Sechington Cup cars, the J40s. Um, I've neatly positioned myself uh, behind the next generation of the Franchitti dynasty. We've got Sophia here. Um, now, your, your, your father's not here this weekend, but is he giving you some advice? Yes, he um, is missing me and I really miss him. I wish he was here with me today. Um, and I just feel like I could really use his help, but I'm here and I'm happy right now. And what do you think? Are you going to try and get a podium? Yeah. And there it is. We're underway for the Cetrixon Cup and a wonderful cheer for the grandstands as well. Who's going to get a good reaction? That's from the driver from pole position. You can see the little feet under the car at 19, pushing really, really hard. But the 177, fabulous speed from uh, Rafe Burnett, gets into the lead of the race. Now, what do they see ahead of them? Plenty of cars behind, no mirrors, of course. But then here comes the chicane. I said they may come in two, three, four abreast, but a clear leader, Rafe Burnett, into the chicane. It's a three part chicane. It's getting very busy behind us. Someone's trying to cut the chicane at the back. Good tactic, you may get pink for that though. Around the other side of the chicane. Dark red car, Oscar Wilson making fabulous moves. <laughs> Are we going to have a change? Oh, oh, that is what crash. we call the schmozzle. A crash in the middle of the chicane. All that training for what? <laughs> Over the line we come. Great effort across the line. It's been absolutely fantastic. I'm here, as you said, at Revive and Thrive. I'm hosting a lot of in conversations throughout the weekend. We also have some other fantastic hosts. Dandy Wellington is here. Michaela Sharp is here hosting talks with an enormous, huge array of people who are all talking about things like sustainability, secondhand clothes, vintage. Obviously, everybody here has a huge love of vintage shopping, things like repairing, making King, all kinds of stuff going on. The flag waves and we're underway as it's a good start from all three on the front row. Rob Hoff trying to get away but Roman Dumas in the Thunderbird has got ahead. Out there is Karun Chandak. He's had a very busy weekend and a very clean start to the race. Yeah, on board with Karun. That's fun to see as you've got the battle going on and that's a really good uh, little oh, nearly goes wrong, doesn't it? Very, very close. Side nice. by side by side. Are they going to make ever so contact? They're just about. But joining in, they're going to have a three-way battle for third place. Trying to will the car on down the straight. But meanwhile, we saw a great view of the Benoit and John. Oh, oh. Come on, lost it. I was just thinking he's a bit wide. He's just lost it. Thankfully, no contact made. You get to watch it on board as he recovers. Great recovery. 360 and he's back on track. Yeah, like a pro. Yeah, he's like crossing himself, though. You can see that. He was yeah. Cross of himself. The uh, button got a good run through there because the top two, uh, Trilouis and Johnson, got so sort of tied up. Look at this, side by side. Here comes Tom Christensen. And, oh my goodness, they're going through lapping cars as well. That was tight. Wow. They'll say, no, it wasn't tight at all. Plenty of room. But wow, within a lap, he's. Uh, paved the way through already and into the podium position. Yes. But meanwhile, this battle here is still raging between Jensen Button and Jimmy Johnson. Yeah, he's got a chance again. And this time it looks as though Jensen is going to be back up in front as they come into Woodcut Corner. Nicely lined up. Lost in a he didn't have quite the same pace there. Dust being kicked up by somebody running a bit wide. This is the race leader coming to collect the checkered flag. And Roman Dumas comes across the line to win St Mary's Trophy Part 1. And that is a hat-trick of victories in this category. Isn't it magical? And there is something about, yes, meeting, I've just met Mark Blundell, you know, meeting people that you've known over the years uh, and have been honoured to meet over the years, Jackie Stewart and people like that. But, you know, there's a camaraderie, which is just wonderful. And I don't put myself up as a motor racing driver, but boy, oh boy, am I an enthusiast. And the flag falls at Goodwood. We are racing down to Madrid Corner with a good getaway from those on the front row. Various speeds further back, but Emmanuel Piro is braving it to the outside and pushing on very, very hard indeed, Alexander Ames, but Piro did all he oh, could, but he will be in the lead because our race leader is our spinner, just oh. a kiss with the tyres, just coming into St Mary's, and uh, I don't know if that should have done any damage to the car, but it certainly lost the lead for Rob Hall, and there is our race leader, Emmanuel Piro, with clear air behind him, Rob Hall. But he's just waiting for the straight 
to be able to use it. Doesn't need much of it as he makes his way through the kink. And then next up is Vincent Gay in the uh, 250 GT from 1960. That is the car being chased down by the 526. Scrap that, that's the car oh, not making the way. Hanging on to the position as we make our way through. Wait for it, five and a half seconds, but as soon as Rob Paul goes through, which may even be now, yet yeah, it's looking as though it's going to be now into Magic. There was no point Vincent Gay blocking him. Yeah, you can see the scuff on the right, left rear corner of that 250 LM. He is now going to set off Rob Paul after a race leader, Emmanuel Piro. And he's still setting a cracking pace, Piro leading this race, still quicker than everybody else. But Rob Paul's performance advantage is clear for all to see. Emmanuel Piro too wide to try and fight against it. He just uh, moved down to the way. Don't forget, if Rob Paul hadn't spun halfway around the opening lap, he'd be uh, not quite over the rise and he'd be pulling clear. But look, Rob Paul is really, really pressing on. To the inside, and a lovely overtake as he makes his way through in the final corners. And we're enjoying every moment of it. Karun's had another moment. Karun Chandok. No, no, he's, the fact he's getting out so yeah. quickly, he's aware that something's gone pop as a line come off. Yeah, and he well, gets... Where Karun's race came undone. Whoa, look at that. No wonder he jumped out of it sharpish. Well, it looks like an oil line or something has uh, come adrift. And that was, well, Karun, to hold that, to get it off the circuit, to park it away safely. In fact, you can see the lick of, lick of fire under the flame under the engine and get out that quickly. That was absolutely prescient. So uh, ah. not too surprisingly, we've got the safety car out because uh, there is the race leader. Rob Hall has been uh, picked up. But really, really good start there for Rob Hall. Should have done enough. We are racing again. Can Emanuele Pirro do anything about Rob Hall in the LM that completed it to perfection? He took the lead. He had a spin. He regained the lead. He will look up and see the checkered flag first. Rob Hall wins with a superb performance to take the Levant Cup and a great, great drive. Is it time to go racing? You bet it is! The green flag flies at Goodwood once again. Oh, gaining, gaining, gaining and going through. Down the back straight, down the back straight. He's going to go the long way around, but he's going to make it in front just in time. Yeah, you don't, I wouldn't want to be spinning and uh, going onto the grass in one of these cars as down the inside goes Cowens. Takes P2 away from Ben Collins. He's got a tiny gap in front of him to the number 44. He's actually pulled a little bit of a, ever so slightly of a gap because these two behind have been uh, changing position. Just having a check where the rival is. Uh, arm up of acknowledgement there. For car number one's Christoph Cowens, who is the leader at the moment with Fabry trying to retake that place on the podium by, or at least thinking about it, to move up into the top three. Nothing the Voxel could do about it. Maybe positioning the car for the corners to come, but that is a continuation as he shuts the door and takes the place. So they have peeled into the pits. There they are on the screen now. For the number seven, which is getting closer, which is drawing alongside, and this could be a late change for the lead. Maybe smoking out of the vine corner, but it's quick, you know. And that's a great pass. Through goes Graham to take first place. Bailey's late on the brakes. Is it going to get it stopped into good into Woodcut corner? Sorry, yes. Just about. We can see him fighting on the wheel. Does he run wide? No. Just keeps it within the track. In the 98 car in fifth place, has that penalty for the pit stop infringement. Side by side we go, penultimate tour of the circuit. These cars from the 1920s going wheel to wheel once again. Check of the left-hand mirror. Is there anyone there? There is now. The Bentley's back in the lead. For now, what a superb display from both of these drivers. There's a check over the shoulder, but it's the car in the lead. The Bentley of number seven and victory for Graham and Colling.
so well, welcome, first of all. This is the Revive and Thrive workshop. Um, so this I've sort of set up a, a workshop area where there's actually, as you can see, there's level work going on at the moment. Uh, the crowds are gathering. And I'm encouraging people to come down and be inspired. That's the kind of the key word for me. There's all different stalls around here, different craftspeople throughout the weekend, from gilding, sign writing, block printing, level work, all different, all weekend. And I'm encouraging everybody to roll their sleeves up, come on down and have a go. And it's a good getaway out from the 99 of Quaithen Thorpe has hit the front of the field. Yeah, absolutely now the start and uh, the car that Mark Webber sharing with Bonamy Grimes gained several places. It's the white one with the blue stripe in about 10th place, but up front, brilliant start from the middle of the front row. So uh, car 99 into lead this race. Sun getting lower in the sky, but a beautiful day. And St. Perez has already gained one position. That's the championship leader from fourth up to third. And that's a move for the lead. And that would have been a sensational one of that. That would be one that Oliver Webb would want to see back. He has managed to fight his way to the front of the field. And the driver that lined up in fifth position on the grid leads us over the line into lap two. Oh, there, but he got it back on the black stuff. See what I mean about that gap? And then in the background, someone else has gone for a big one. That was the car that started stone last car number 52 and a, a flame from the tail that that's just unburned fuel in the exhaust pipe there that's the car shared by uh, Christian Cole England and Johnny Molum round it went yeah lights are off and we are ready to go back racing once again driver and you're pairing in first or second and clearly they decided in their case put them in second and there is Andrew Jordan car number nine coming out he will be given the maximum amount of time that he can to make an attack and likewise 99 into the pits and out of the pits so one would think we need double check, but I would think that was uh, James Thorpe handing over to Phil Quaid, probably in that. So they've taken the early tactic. Two abreast, how do you like that? Coming up shortly. Uh, it's very, very close. Seb Perez all over the back. Yeah, Max Shilton uh, having a debrief before jumping in the car. Good run now, this, for the 77 of Seb Perez, who is fighting his way past. That's the second car he's passed on this lap. He is having a terrific run this time around and he's up to second place yeah think about that though Seb Perez has been up and down the order sort of in the top six right. but there is the leader car number nine streaking through 99 the two cars that pitted really early Alex. Yeah. it's worked for them they've put their quicker driver in second and their first and second as the others come out into third place but only for a nanosecond goes uh, Guy Ziza the car that was third in the fourth is now third because 77 is coming through with George Gamble adapting very quickly indeed they came in the reversed order on the same lap but just quickly out of the pits and 77 is head of 77777 seven, seven, seven. Yeah, excellent to see as the 99 continues on going past the 44 now Freddie March behind the wheel we spoke to him earlier in the pit lane and uh, making his way by and be loving his time behind the wheel and here is the man who is bringing it home and uh, the clock is going to run out the clock has gone to zero and so these are the winning moments the victory moments for the class of the field and then some car number nine is the one that we're looking for headlights flashing fantastic pace and andrew jordan brings it home it's victory for jordan and home superb stuff the best dressed man and the best dressed woman here at goodwood revival for this very hot saturday <laughs> barry how are you coping i'm melting I feel like I've lost about five kilos in weight. I've drank probably four litres of water today. That's good to know. And I don't think I've taken it enough. <laughs> it's a scorching day. We're in a three-piece woolen suit. Well, listen, it was worth it because you are the best-dressed man. Tell us about this suit. The suit is 1945. Uh, came from the United States. I've had it for about six, eight years. Um, very comfortable, but very heavy. And very, uh, yeah sops up all the moisture. It's hot. It's really it's hot. hot. The Winston Trophy is underway. Actually, it's a really good start from James Davison on the outside of the front row. The silver McLaren M1B. Yeah, it's James Davison who launches into the lead, gets in front of Stuart Hall from pole position, goes into second place. Ollie Bryant, I think, has been pushed down to third. And they got through into the lead, so Bryant is chasing Hall. 
So these two are very, very fast experienced. But like you said, Ben, they are scrapping, and that is allowing Davison. He set the fastest lap of the race, and he's gone purple in the first sector. A big six tenths faster than the two behind him. So they need to either sort themselves out very quickly, otherwise yeah. it might be too late. We've still got 22 minutes remaining, but as we know, that can go very quickly. back end of the uh, of the car providing downforce uh, the front end as well the spoilers it was the time the spoilers really became oh no oh my goodness off goes julian draper number 22 oh oh how frustrating what a shame hopefully we can get underway racing very quickly and there you go as you mentioned ben there's a little pull off there for the truck to reverse into and then it will eventually take the the car back but the lights Ladies and gents, are off on the safety car, so we'll be back underway very shortly. A bit really quickly, and he's going to go for it. This is going to give him an opportunity to open up the gap. Now Ollie Bryan will go past Keith Arlers, who's waved it through. But actually, Ollie's under a bit of pressure now from Stuart Hall. Yeah, he is. And they're all just getting round the outside. Brave stuff there from Stuart Hall, but the gap is already been 2.3 seconds between Davison and Bryan. So that was a really good restart. So a lot of work to do by Ollie Bryant and Stuart Hall. But there, coming across through the final chicane, Ben, will be our race winner. James Davison is coming through to take victory in the Whitson Trophy in the McLaren after a brilliant race, a good start, and then perfect planning. Even on the restart, he did it extremely well, taking fastest lap on the last lap but one.